Welcome to Comics Oddities. My name is Eric. So, R. Crumb. He's one of the, the greatest, most well-known underground cartoonists to ever pick up a pen. Not only is he an amazing draftsman, his art's very, very beautiful and detailed and, and technically rich, full of, of little intricate cross-hatching and, and interesting layouts and, and, and graphic design. He's also an amazing storyteller. He's a clever and, and brilliant satirist. But as much as he's loved by people and found to be influential by a lot of great artists out there, he's also hated by people. I mean, hated. Especially newer generations of, of cartoonists and, and artists out there. A lot of his comics are very shocking and controversial and have to deal with topics like sex, uh, religion, uh, race, uh, violence, and they even go as far as incest and pedophilia sometimes. And not to mention, above all, he also just kind of seems like a dick. I mean, he's never done anything extremely immoral or cancelable through the public lens, but um, through his long, angry letters he's written to people, uh, just through his attitude, you can see in the, in the Crumb documentary, he just seems to be a, a bit of an asshole, and, and a, a bit of a, a curmudgeon would be the right word. He just seems like somebody who's a little stuffy and uptight and kind of angry at everything. So come with me today and we'll discuss whether it's okay to like the shocking, sexual, and, and intense art that R. Crumb makes. And I'll even show some of his art too, although it won't be the crazy intense stuff, you'll have to seek that out for yourself. I do not want to get this channel deleted, that has happened to me in the past. <laughs> R. Crumb was one of the first um, underground alternative cartoonists that I uh, discovered actually. Around the time of first finding out about him, I drew a lot in his style and made comics in his style as well. And I mean, I still have several of his books. I got the Crumb Collection and the, the Book of Genesis. But there was a time where I stopped reading anything that R. Crumb ever made altogether. It's noted that uh, Art Spiegelman, creator of Raw Magazine, uh, Mouse, he stopped talking to Crumb for a long period of time because of this comic that he made called When Blanks Take Over America. And in the comic, um, African Americans take over the United States. The United States is, is separated into uh, little street gangs. He depicts black people as very uncivilized, brutish, violent rapists. That comic uh, made Art Spiegelman stop talking to R. Crumb, and um, when I found out about that, that made me stop reading anything Crumb ever did as well. I had a friend at the time who started developing this very toxic mindset and, and viewpoints and I didn't want to fall into that myself. Just reading that comic really kind of unsettled me. What really irritated me the most about that whole situation is that white supremacists ended up taking that comic and posting it on their website and R. Crumb didn't really do anything about it. He just kind of tricked it off and was like, well, they're a bunch of dumb idiots who don't understand satire. And he didn't really try to take it down or, or really do anything at all. However, I don't think R. Crumb is, is a racist. Now just hear me out on that. I, I'm pretty 100% sure he's by no means a racist. By making comics like the one that I just mentioned, and of course, like Angel Food Mix Spade, it definitely comes off that way at, at knee-jerk reaction. But he's not promoting or celebrating that behavior. He's making a satirical analysis of it, and he's doing it in a very shocking and provocative way to get people's attention. So keep that in mind. Despite moving away to France and often talking about how much he despises America and that, that brands and companies are taking over the culture, 
I believe that like the uh, African-American blues and folk musicians that Crum is absolutely obsessed with, I think his art is uh, deeply American. And America is sadly rooted in a lot of racism and violence and sexism and uh, exploiting humanity for capital gain. R. Crumb is commenting on that and bringing it to the surface for discussion. And this is happening in the 1960s counterculture movement where people are really um, questioning societal norms and the government and sex. Crumb often likes to say in his interviews that when he's drawing and making comics that he's often letting out his inner darkest demons and traumas. And I think that goes for America as a whole but also his personal issues. As a result, he often says he's a better person because of that, and he, if he wasn't an artist, he would probably end up in a prison somewhere, or, or crazy. And honestly, maybe he's right, because in the Crumb documentary, one of his brothers, Maxon, ends up becoming this like public molester who gets locked up in a loony bin, and then his other brother, Charles, becomes this, this sad man who's like plagued with depression and anxiety and lives his entire life a virgin living with his mother doped up on all these pills until he eventually commits suicide. Uh, it's really sad actually. Another aspect of Crumb's comics that are very controversial is the sex and there's a lot of it. Now Crumb is obsessed with sex and it's just about in every comic he does. He likes big, busty, overpowering women with big thighs and, and asses and like curly, thick hair. He likes getting piggyback rides and like foot fetish kind of stuff. He said through interviews and his own comics that he actually masturbates to his own drawings. Now some would say uh, the sex alone in his comics are um, misogynistic and objectifying women. I personally um, don't think there's anything creepy or wrong with showing gratuitous sex um, in, through art. I think it's a natural part of being a human being. Everyone thinks about sex. Every, it's something that's always on people's mind. I don't think there's anything wrong with expressing that or showing it through art. I personally think it's a good thing to talk about sex and art. Now some women uh, view Crumb's comics and drawings as misogynistic, but also some find it very empowering. Because he often fetishizes and, pu and puts on a pedestal uh, traits in women that are often seen as undesirable or looked down upon in society. Like I said, he often draws big busty women instead of like dainty, petite models. Now that sex really isn't an issue. The real problem that comes into play is the comics where women's heads are cut off and, and used as, as sex objects or the comic where he goes inside of a um, angry feminist's vagina and is able to control her around through her clitoris and eventually destroys the women's liberation building. And then we have like the wholesome 1950s family orgies that happened in some of his comics and um, you know, I don't know. Is incest really a bad thing? That's a whole nother topic. So is that kind of stuff okay to read? Well personally, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Crumb even knows the answer to that. As I've said before, uh, Crumb is putting down whatever comes from his id down onto the page and just giving it out to the world in a form of therapy. Some of that's very ugly and some of it's very unsettling at times. I recently rewatched the Crumb documentary uh, for the first time in a long time and it's a really good documentary. I recommend you check it out if you haven't if you want to learn uh, more about this topic. And in the documentary, um, Crumb sits down with a woman who read one of his comics as a child and it really traumatized her. It gave her different thoughts about like self-image as a woman and like fetishes and it was just really strange for her and it, and it kind of followed through for the rest of her life. And Crumb's response is basically, in his comics he puts down what he needs to put down and after that they kind of live a life of their own. Um, some people it's too much for them and those people shouldn't read what he has to say and some people uh, love it and if some people want to publish it that's their own right. 
So, is it okay for you to read and like R. Crumb's comics? Well, um, I think R. Crumb would agree that's kind of up to you to decide. Some people love it, some people hate it. His comics aren't for everybody, but uh, through and through, Crumb, I believe, personally, is a true artist and a true provocateur. His comics uh, bring out the dark underbelly of the human psyche and our societal norms and kind of puts it in your face in a way that can be kind of hard to look at sometimes. At the end of the day, I don't think I would want to live in a world without Crumb's comics and comics and art um, like that because I think it's good to uh, be shocked sometimes and get to see different perspectives and also get your own beliefs questioned and, and shaken up once in a while. It can be a positive experience to feel uncomfortable. So those are my thoughts on R. Crumb's comics. I'm really excited and happy to see if anyone else has uh, their thoughts on, on R. Crumb's comics, whether they should be reading them or not. So let me know in the comments. Don't start a war in there, though. Let's have a peaceful discussion, like the 1960s counterculture that, that Crumb was somewhat a part of, but kind of hated at the same time. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to eat your vegetables, exercise, and read more comics. Pretty kitty sitting row by row. They are not confident. Fishing silly stroll. Staring into your eyes, looking into your soul. But I'll tell you that I might as well be sitting in silence.